Well, I'm in this business because I want to be in there. I've been aspiring to be an actor since I was a kid, you know. I've been involved in the arts, writing, um, acting, the whole works. And I went ahead to study theatre arts and after that I came straight into acting. So something's always been in there, something that I haunt and something that I'm doing at the moment. And trust me, every single day when I wake up, it's just a blessing knowing that I do what I'm gifted at and I get paid for it and you know I'm involved in it. It just suffuses my soul with so much happiness. Added to the Hollywood, uh, basically three things. I think there should be a strengthening of government policies to help with the makers. You know what I mean? Uh, there's policies that will um, support the industry as it were. You know what I mean? Um, in terms of um, you know participation, in terms of piracy and you know whatnot. Also, I think that would be an amazing idea to have greater channels for distribution. You know, across all portals, from cinema to um, online to um, you know uh, terrestrial distribution. And also, it'd be nice to have investors who put them money where their mouth is, people who are involved in it and say, you know what, we're going to, because a lot of times when you look at it, basically at the moment, at the space that we're in, the only thing that really demarcates us from, from Hollywood, per se, is the budgeting. Because we're looking at people trying to make movies on that scale, we're always saying, oh, you know what, Hollywood, why do you feel like, maybe we should be like Hollywood now. Yeah. One Hollywood movie t takes 200 million US dollars to shoot one film. 200 million times 365 right now, my mathematics is really bad. We're talking trillions. You know what I mean, right? And here, we're not even doing, I mean, if we do a 50 million now, that's a big budget movie, so, yeah. For me, it was just, um, it was, once again, it was always me. I always wanted to be an actor. So, uh, I've been training myself. There's some natural traits that I have that lend themselves to me being who I am at the moment. You know, growing up, I always like to tell stories, reenact situations, and all the time, my friends would tell me stories because they wanted me to tell them to the rest of the guys. And I'm like, okay, how are you telling me the story to tell the other guys when it happened to you? I'm like, no, no, you know, when you tell the stories, they're so much more interesting. You know what I mean, right? So I became the official storyteller. So everyone would tell me their stories. And when we got together, the one who told me the story would sit down with the rest of the guys and listen to the story with rapt attention. You know what I mean, right? So it was a skill that I started growing in that phase until it became, you know, uh, me at the moment and, uh, you know, serves, serves me in good stead. So. It's been a mixture of everything, just like life, you know, there's nothing that's totally good, there's nothing that's totally bad, but we're mostly good, because once again, it is an absolute pleasure, an absolute blessing, waking up in the morning, knowing that you're doing for a living the gift that, I mean, using for a living the gift that you've been given by the Almighty God, and also the passion that you have, so just waking up, going on set, relieving the character, aiding with directing, you know, just creating. Yeah, I like to be around the creative process because I'm a creative person. So for me, it's absolutely imperative that I'm always around someplace, somewhere, where they're creating, whether it be music, poetry, spoken word, you know, fabric, um, writing, whatever it is, I just like to be around there. It's um, the gift that God gave to me. Yeah, so they said the gift and calling is of uh, of God or without repentance. That means when God gives you a gift, uh, you can't return it. You know what I mean, right? So if you're a good footballer, 
if you don't use this, the gift you have, it gets rusty over time, you know what I mean? But you can't return it. You can't say, oh, you know what, God made me a good singer. I don't want to, you know what, take this back, you know? Even if you don't, the day that you open your voice, you will sing well. It might not be as good as someone who does it all the time, but it will be a recognizable gift. Oh, wow, that person can sing, you know? So that's the gift that was given. Though. Give them the gift to be able to, to, to recreate other people's personalities, recreate their lives in such a way that when I'm shooting a movie and I'm a bad person, people see me in the streets and they really think I'm a bad person and they react to me that way because they can't see beyond the facade. All they see is that guy, that bad guy, yo. And then sometimes when a plate is softy, people run into me in the street. I've been in a case where some guy saw me and it was actually literally pushing me around because I've been in a movie where some girl was pushing me around to slap me and I was just all making gentle and he goes, ah, this guy, oh my, this slap anyhow. And he kept pushing me back and forth. But um, it's a good thing that he didn't push me too far because he would have had a dose of the real me and you know, not all soft and complete. It's not a word it's a force to reckon with, even from the very get-go, because it's not just because it's not a word, also because it's run by Nigerians. So we have an indomitable spirit. The whole world can't help but notice and know Nigeria and Nigerians. You know what I mean, right? It's a lot of hate. People just look at it and say, oh, we don't like Nigerians, they're so loud, they're so... But the thing is, Nigerians are very confident and we pursue everything wholeheartedly. And not only is our baby, you know what I mean, right? It's our baby, it's also our our project to the world, you know what I mean, right? So over time, it's been expanding. People have been training, people have been going out, learning more. So the train won't stop. Nollywood is never going to fall off from top three in the world. I actually see Nollywood going to, at some point, surpassing Hollywood, not immediately, but soon. Because truth of the matter is, people are growing on a daily. Things are happening, and the truth of the matter is, the African perspective, the Nigerian perspective, is not a story that's been told a lot because we get stories from abroad, we get all those FBI and Yankee things, but there are lots of indigenous stories that are very pertinent and very um, uh, 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 um, descriptive of our people that we haven't explored yet. So the time will come when we're going to start selling that to the world and the world will listen, just the same way the world is listening to our Afrobeats right now. That would be the prerogative of a producer per se, who would be able to break these things down. I think that it's important that we get our product out to, I mean, that's what every, every uh, producer of a product wants, you know what I mean? Whether you're doing um, goods and services, whether you're doing, um, 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 you know, um, artistic produce, whatever it is, you want to get your market out to the world up at large. So Netflix is doing a big with Amazon Prime, all the Apple, you know, those guys are doing content at the moment. So the most important thing is just to be able to, to get the quality. Because every one of these people have the prerequisites to tell you, we want you to shoot on this uh, on this format, we want the script to look like this one. This. So it's just about getting all these factors of production together in such a way that we can harness that and then start getting our stories out. Anyone who knows me knows that I don't have favorites. So I don't have a favorite color, favorite food, favorite scent. I don't do best. You know what I mean, right? I don't have a favorite uncle, favorite. Mm -mm. I just, if it's good, it's good. So there have been, you know, some movies that are good for some time. My mentor in Nollywood would be life. Because that's the only thing that I've really learned from, life in particular. It's been hard for me as a human being to tie myself to one person. Oh, I want to model myself after or fashion myself after. And the same way I tell people that they shouldn't try to fashion themselves after me in any way. I'm a human being who has found my way, I've stumbled, I've fallen. I'm still finding myself, you know what I mean, right? So but what I do is I study life and there's no better teacher. You know what I mean, right? Because when I walk past somewhere, I'm always paying attention to little details. I'm looking at the, dy the dynamics of interpersonal relationships that exist between people. How does that person talk to that person? How does that person respond to what they said? 
What is it that made that person respond that way? Why did that person say that thing? When you pay attention to that, you've learned a whole lot more. And it pays as an actor because ultimately, when I'm acting some roles, I can dig deep into myself and find from that repertoire so many things that happened that I've noticed before and put it all together. And that's why when someone does something, it is so real. When you cry, people cry with you, and you laugh, we'll laugh with you because it's just real. When we're studying theatre, they said there are no small roles, only small actors. And so for me, I would play virtually any role because it's just one thing that acting does for you is it grants you perspective because you're always in different people's shoes all the time. Then you begin to understand people a bit more. You know what I mean, right? Because today you're playing a pastor who is pious and holier than thou, that he falls to temptation. Why did he fall into that temptation? What happened before? What happened after? What happened in, in, you know, in between the process. And tomorrow, you hear on the news that some pastor fell into temptation. It's easier for you to understand and tolerate other people because then you're thinking, oh, it could have happened to me. It could have happened to him. You know what I mean, right? So, yeah, that's, that's how that goes. Oh, unforgettable moment. I mean, lots of things have happened over, over, over the years. Uh, but, Mm, unforgettable would be some experience that I was shooting um, and uh, my wife was the producer and the writer of the movie. It was shot in 2007. Um, uh, the, the, um, the distance between. So whilst shooting I had a romantic scene to shoot with Mercy Johnson and it was you know, involved a lot of heavy petting and kissing and everything. So my wife was in the, in the back of the camera watching and so we acted that part. And so when we shot the first day, she called me back. She said, that's not what I wrote. That what you guys are doing is too plastic, it's too superficial. I want you guys to go into it. So real deep kisses, touching is everything. I need to be real. You know what I mean, right? And so um, she also called Mercy because apparently Mercy was also feeling a bit stiff. Because, I mean, hey, you know, this guy's wife is right here, what are we doing? You know, but after that, we went in, we shot it, it was beautiful, it's an amazing story. Um, but this is the truth. Majid. I would like to work with Majid, we haven't worked before. Um, uh, yeah, that's the one. The other one. Um, that would be Biodun Stevens. She's a friend of mine. Uh, I used to know her way back in the day, before her first child was born. Uh, she's an amazing personality, a beautiful soul. And she always told me at the time that she wanted to come to Nolan, where she wanted to be a director. And I didn't totally understand it because I thought it was just in the, she was caught in the way for the moment. But today she's one of the most um, one of the most prolific producer directors around. You know what I mean? So it would be nice to, to work with her. We were supposed to do something some time ago, but unfortunately, uh, logistics went all awry. So we didn't do it. But now I'm hoping that before the end of next year, we'll definitely work on the project. Yeah, working on a couple of projects at the moment. Uh, uh, one would be a series, you know what I mean? Another one, an experimental movie. I've learned that um, no man is an island, of, um, no one is an island, no one knows it all. And I've all, also learned that um, uh, not everyone is open to suggestions. I've also learned to be able to um, realize that it, one, there's not only one way into solving a situation. You know what I mean, right? So sometimes you think, you look at the director, he's handling something this way. And you think, oh yeah, but movie making is not so much a science as it's an art. Even though there's a science to the art. So you think someone is doing something wrong, but at the end of the day, when you see the final cut, it actually works. Because everyone has their own mental process, you know what I mean? So it's just nice and tolerant and very flow.
It's just the flow. It's just the flow. You read a story and then sometimes, some stories you read them are very tedious. You know, you have to force yourself through page after page after page. And by the time you get to the end, you're almost certain where you are. Some, some just roll off the tongue, you know, you just read them and it just goes really fast. So for me, it's just about that organic thing. You read it, it is, seems like, it's, it's, it reads like a good story. You look at the factors around it and you know that it's going to make a good movie. So you take it. Some just doesn't feel right to me. You're like, hey, you know, let's just leave this and work it out. Most of them. There have been a couple, I can't remember the names of the characters, there have been a couple that have been slightly close, you know, but not, of course, never get exactly you, because even as a human being, we're constantly evolving, you know what I mean? So today you think you're this person, and then three days later you're like, oh, I'm not really that person, it's just, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's so a couple of them. Just a couple. I make music, I love music, and for me, I remember the first movie that I made and where I went by somewhere and someone was showing it, and someone looked at it and said, oh, that guy did that, you know what I mean, right? It's a thrill to it. I can't wait to get the thrill of putting out my music, driving by somewhere, and someone is playing it, and that's my gift, my talent, given to me by God, out there, and someone is appreciating it, I just can't wait for that thrill, so yeah, that one. Not really, not really. For me, it's um, if, if, if I look at it, if I visualize it, I try to, once again, I observe life keenly, astutely. So wherever I go, I'm always paying attention to people, the dynamics of relationships, how people talk, how they behave, how they walk, you know, what motivates them to do the things they do. So for me, regurgitating that or trying to make it you know, um, I work for people. It's not something that once I commit myself to it, you know, just get deeper and deeper into. So I, I haven't been in a situation where I thought, oh, I'm struggling with this now. Not really. Um, there was a character I played some time ago. Um, it must have been 2005 or six. Myself, Joseph Benjamin, Motola Jonadi. And the, the character was called Wages. He was a very stoic person. He didn't lose to say much. He wore the same costume all through the movie. He had a big scar across his face. And most he used to say was just look at you and say, for your sake and love, I hope you've not sinned. Because the wages of sin is death. So yeah, I love the character. Um, wages. So I would like to do something along that line again. So, you know those kind of characters that don't say much and they do much and you, the acting you're doing is not with the dialogue, it's just with your face and your body, you know what I mean? So. Eat research, you know what I mean? An actor prepares, um, that's what they say. You have to, the bulk of the preparation you do, of course, is first of all the talent that you have, constantly training yourself, and thirdly, like I said, observing life. So when you do that, and then you have a localized um, situation, like you have a script and you look at it, what am I doing? I'm playing a doctor. Then, first thing I think, well, who's this doctor? When I have a character breakdown profile, I start to add little things to bring the doctor alive. I'm thinking, does a doctor have a lisp? Um, does he have a weakness for women? Does he have a limb? Uh, does he have OCD? Um, does he have a fast blink? Does he talk fast or talk slow? Just all those little mannerisms that put a dichotomy between myself and the doctor. So that when I get on set, it's not Yumi Black, the doctor. If it's Shekin or Bimbi, Dr. Shekin or Bimbi, who will sound different, probably has a small limb from an old injury, you know what I mean? who probably doesn't use his hands a lot because he was trained in Ukraine and they were in a rather state. So all those little things add together and then by the time you put, put it to life, people just believe it. The 
one person that I would love to meet is Lauren Hill. People have crushes and um, you know they're always, most of the time, guys have crushes on this women like Nicki Minaj and the rest of them, you know, they're built in a certain way. And I've always been sepiosexual or not really motivated by it. You know, how someone looks or something for me is always about what's in here. So I think Lauren Hill is one of the more, most gifted, most talented women that I've ever seen on television. So it would just be amazing for me because if she ever came on set, trust me, I don't think I'm going to stay on set much that day because I would love to be able to spend the whole day with her. Just talking, relating with her, getting to understand the songwriting process. And it would be an absolutely amazing pleasure for me and her to sit down and write a song together. I don't have favourites. <laughs> I want to be a singer, a really nice singer slash rapper slash songwriter. Or I would have been working in advertising, or I would have been an author, or maybe just a very destructive poet, but something in that in that you know in that in the creative space. Basically, for me, it's just a reading, writing. Well, I love to write uh, poetry, I love to write songs, and I like to stay at home. I'm a, I'm a stay at home kind of person, you know. Um, so, for me, I just like to be home. It's just nice to be able to chill out, sit in my corner, and just um, plan and strategize. So, that's the way we're just creating, you know, writing. Sometimes, if I cut the bomb, just get my pen and write the song. Sometimes, I write this one minute song to Instagram. Just to you know, keep the flow going. So it's a, yeah, I'm a simple person. Really, have been always simple. It's the fact that it's us. That's the element. That's what is selling. It's us. It's the faces we know. The people that because when we when I was growing up, my generation we grew up on Bollywood movies. We grew up on um, Shaolin films, Chinese movies, and then a smattering of, of American films. That's what we grew up on. So all the heroes that we knew, they were all white faces. You know, white faces or Indian faces. Those were the heroes that we knew. But now, we're seeing black people who speak with the same accent that we do, doing the self same things that we do. So that's, a, that's the selling point. It's the fact that it's us. You know what I mean, right? So it's no longer Ramendra or it's no longer one foreign name. It's Shola Peters, it's Ramsey Noah, Yemi Black, you know, people around us, you know, so I think that's the element, the fact that it showcases us. Fun fact that fans are there about me would be the fact, I mean, hey, I'm, would be the fact that I speak my language rather fluently. I'm from a little town, uh, a little town in the state, so. Yeah, I speak my language fluently. I take pride in the fact that I, that I do that. And um, another fun fact is that um, I. Um, I'll give you another words. Yeah. The first advice that you need to hear is first of all, you need to know that you have talent. Don't just listen to your family members and think because they probably just tell you what you want to hear. Go out and get good criticism from people from outside. Know that you have talent. Once you determine that you have talent, go for some training and always put yourself in places where you can get the right exposure. Go for auditions, you know, you get more experience as you go there, you get more confidence and just keep trying it. You know, it's so one day then something might just click. My name is Yemi Black. I'm a Norwood actor. I like the fact that uh, this is one Nigeria. And my other part is not just Yoruba, it's an Igbo man called Mazi Ezioku. And that's my name now. Yemi Black, aka Mazi Ezioku, has spoken. Thank you very much.